The question is, can a community or multiple residents take a municipality to court for a failure to deal with and remove land grabbers who have built illegal structures in and around a particular community. The proposed um, you know, action that these individuals, these residents will bring in court uh, is based on a rapid decrease in property value and potentially a strain on water and electrical supply due to an influx of persons into the area. Um, would such uh, you know, an action by residents uh, you know, be successful? I think uh, Bruno. Me, me. Okay, excellent. Um, I was waiting for that. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, so, so it, it's such an interesting question because I mean, it's it the hijacking situation at the moment, especially of land and like illegal squatting and the like, is becoming so prevalent in the news. Um, and from a human rights perspective, there's been a whole bunch of cases recently that have dealt with people's rights to occupation and the like. Um, so you, look, the general the general rule is that the owner of the property is the one that's actually responsible for dealing with what's happening on the property. So if somebody moves in next door, uh, like in this situation, let's say that they move in, they set up some informal structures, um, and you run to the municipality, it's not going to help because if this is privately owned land, uh, the question really is, is the municipality in any way responsible for what happens on this privately owned land or is that landowner responsible for it, right? So even though, yes, in our law, the, the city should provide accommodation to, to persons, uh, it's a different story to first get them off the property and then be provided accommodation. So ownership of the property would be the first thing that you'd be looking at, right? If it's municipal property, uh, now this is where the difficulty comes in. And I know that Son and I have had this discussion before uh, on whether you can actually compel the municipality to act or not. Um, and I think the conclusion was it is still very great because there is provision being made for one to be able to say, listen, it is your responsibility. Um, but I personally haven't seen many uh, successful court cases or court cases at all that have actually um, been uh, pushed the municipality to evict off their land. I don't know if you have, Solna. Well, I mean, it, uh, that, that old case, uh, uh, Mangung Municipality Vizu, I'm going to forget who the other party is there, but um, it worked pretty well and they, there was an obligation placed uh, on the municipality to attend to the eviction. And then uh, thanks to Section 6 of fire, obviously, mm. They do have they do have like a standard, but I think that the prospects of compelling a municipality to attend to an eviction mm. of their own land, where they are the owner of the land, mm. is potentially less. Uh, the prospects of success in my head is lower mm. than in a case where the property is actually owned by an individual that just doesn't care. Mm. Are you still busy answering, or can I grab him? No, 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 go for it. Let no, me no. grab it's and a, run him. <laughs> no, it's, uh, no, it's perfect. So, it's exactly, yeah, exactly that. <laughs> it's exactly what you were, you were hoping for. <laughs> so, um, why I'm saying what I'm saying is, if land is owned by a private individual, okay, so let's quickly just backtrack to, to, to for the benefit of the viewers. Locus standi, meaning that you have a right to approach a court. When it comes to an eviction, there are limited parties with locus standi. Mm -hmm. So firstly, the owner of the land. Secondly, the person in charge of land who is defined as the person who has or at the relevant time had the authority to place somebody in occupation of the premises. Or in terms of Section 6 of the Prevention of Illegal Evictions Act, the municipality in which jurisdiction this particular land is situated. Now, I have had um, quite a few cases in the past where the municipality starts not on their own land. So there's uh, a few, one or two shacks and then poop, a lot of shacks. And then they start installing services on this land that doesn't belong to them. And by services, I mean porta potties, Jojo tanks. Tonight's session will be called the Jojo tank session. Jojo tanks, so water supply to the area, uh, toilets to the area, meaning that they're creating the impression with the people occupying the land that they may reside there and that it is actually a legal place to put up your shack and, and reside there. 
and in situations like that, I have actually been successful with proper cost orders against municipalities because they do this, because they sort of um, silently agreeing to this, like tacit consent to the illegal occupants, and now you can't expect the owner to pay for the eviction. But to this question, um, if the property, if we assume, Bruno, for, for this question's sake, that the property belongs to a random third party owner that just doesn't do the eviction. My course of action wouldn't be exclusively straight towards the municipality. I think the better action and the, and the better approach to this would be to approach the municipality and say, municipality, we don't know what to do. Will you please help us? Just always start with a letter or communication. Don't just run to court. Um, the court doesn't like it and nobody really likes it. So start with correspondence. If you get no response, the only option you ha would have in my mind would be to approach the court with all your applicants, so all the affected parties, no made up parties, actual real parties. Um, and we, you have two respondents there, the owner of the property, as well as the municipality. And you ask for alternative prayers, compelling the owner to attend to the eviction and the municipality to assist with alternative accommodation. Now, failing that, if in the court's opinion, they can go straight for the court, uh, for the for the municipality to do the eviction. Um, so you're going to start first with an application like that to give the court a few options to decide on uh, the most uh, pragmatic and and actual practical practical court order um, to get to the to get to the eviction. And I think I would be reluctant to just jump into something like this with the assumption that this is causing uh, an actual um, decrease in the property price. The, uh, this is something very tricky to prove, guys, because let's, let's use a different example, not a squatting situation, but a neighbor that does not maintain his property. Um, so I have seen personally situations where you have you reside in a lovely neighborhood everything is awesome but the neighbor across the road and the one right next to you decided oh you know what maintenance maintenance i don't like this painting nonsense it costs money i prefer you know booking with airbnbs that double book me uh, whatever the case might be and uh, they are not going to um do the maintenance and effectively that could have an impact on your property price. But how do we prove this? And how do we quantify it? And, and be careful of running to court with a sort of a feeling and you can't prove it. Because how do we prove that, they were, that this is effectively causing a drop in the property prices? Because if we currently draw a report of this particular property price in... 2015 in comparison to now, where is it? How did COVID affect the other, um, the other property prices around you? What else happened in this neighborhood that dropped the property price? If you have all those boxes tick and, and you can actually objectively prove that this is causing you damage and harm to you, then yes, approach a court, but approach with both three respondents, the owner of the property, as well as the municipality, to just go straight, um, you know, <laughs> fire sort of shoot aim, and then uh, you try to get to the municipality because you think uh, they have the deeper pockets and they're probably going to be more successful. You might waste a massive amount of legal costs, and the court might stop you right there and ask, but did you approach the owner for this? And you can fall flat on your face in court on a simple question like that by a judge. Wow. Guys, uh, I can't thank you enough. What, what amazing answers that we received today, uh, for me included, uh, and for uh, our viewers. Uh, so really, thank you both so much.